big man! Oh, it's pretty! It's so, so pretty! The magical 400 point mark is finally reached and surpassed. The Comets take it downtown and Chihuahua plays its first home game in the MASL. All this and more are coming right up. And this is MASL Prime Time. What's up everyone? I'm Alex Bastjavansky. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. And you know, all season long, we've been talking about the chase for 400. Ontario's Frank Taiyu and Kansas City's Leo Gibson have been duking it out like a couple of prize fighters in their quest to become the first player to hit 400 MASL regular season points. Now it was within reach for both players heading into week eight of play. King Frank sat just a single point away as the Fury traveled to Baltimore to take on the Blast. Here's how they sat coming into week eight. Leo was four points away, Frank just one. And with the Fury leading 3-2 in the second quarter, history is made. Of knowing when to step up in front of them as well. Quick turn, and there, there it is. A shot and a goal. Frank Tayu, point number 400 in his career. Goal number 11 on the season. And Ontario leads it 4-2. Frank becomes the first MASL player with 400 regular season points and then he makes it 401 a minute and a half later. Fury up 4-2. Ontario was on a run of six straight goals. Even keeper Chris Toth gets in on the fun. He makes it 6-2 Ontario, then trailing 7-2. The Blast get one back. Mike Diesel, the touch out front. Uh, it was a four goal spread at that point. And then Tony Donatelli steals the pass, punishes Ontario for their sins. It was down to just 7-4, but the Fury run away with it in the fourth. Justin Stinson, the give and go. Stinson, four goals on the day. He paces Ontario to the big 10-4 blowout of Baltimore. Best case all around for the Fury as they win. And Frank gets his 400th regular season point. There you see his career stats. 316 goals. Uh, and actually combined 454 points, including the playoffs. Unreal. Okay, the Chihuahua Savage finally got to play their first ever MASL home game. The first year squad hosting San Diego. Fans were treated to two incredible games last weekend. Uh, the Soccer's draw first blood in this one. Cesar Cerda, gorgeous backdoor pass for Hiram Ruiz. One zip for the blue and gold, and then it's Ruiz again. Look at these moves. And he finishes in style. Two zip San Diego in the second. The Savage get it going though. Tiene que recorrer el campo. Vierte la pelota entre dos es imposible. Va a pegarle, pega arriba. Gol. Se da la vuelta todo. Le deja entrar su y le va a pegar. Viene de golazo. Puerta gol. That doesn't get you pumped up, nothing will. Jump ahead to the fourth now, tied 4-4. Jorge Rios gives the Savage its first lead of the game, but with just 52 seconds left, Tavoy Morgan ties it up for the Soccers. This one needed overtime to decide things. Ah, ya la banda izquierda. El balonazo largo de Boris Pardo, el cazazo de Morgan, el remate! Ruiz the winner, but what a throw by Boris Pardo, the keeper, to get it down there. They did it all over again the next night, and this one was just as dramatic. We pick it up in the fourth. Tied 8-8, Hurriel absolutely crushing it past Pardo to put the Savage up by one. Uh, this one was nowhere close to being done. Tavoy Morgan, the deflection, knots it up again. Uh, then with 16 seconds left, Brandon Escoto gives what surely must be the winner to the Soccers, right? Eh. Chihuahua calls the timeout to go over the strategy and they manage to work some magic in the dying seconds here. With just two seconds left, they tie it. It couldn't possibly get any more dramatic than that, though, right? 
in OT. Tavoy Morgan says, hold my beer. What a crazy couple of games. San Diego takes both contests in OT. Afterwards, Morgan said the Sockers were just trying to follow their game plan. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, we know they was going to come out physical. Uh, we just have to stay calm and keep our composure. And uh, they'll stay tight on defense and then it lead to offense and we finish our chances. Okay, quick look at the top scores. Gibson continues to lead the way, followed by Victor Pereira's Ian Bennett. Uh, Luis Morales with 20 points and Nick Pereira of Tacoma to round out your top five scores. Hey, welcome back to primetime, everyone. Saturday marked a milestone for Kansas City. Now, it was the first time the Comets had hosted a game downtown at T-Mobile Arena in 10 years. The last time they did it was against the Wichita Wings and it was an event with over 9,000 fans packing the rink. So the excitement was palpable as the Comets welcomed Tacoma on Saturday nights. The fans and the players were definitely pumped for this one and the Comets made the hometown crowd happy by striking first. Uh, there's no difference in the playing surface as Lucas Sousa finds Rion Marquez. Marquez shoots, and the Comets are on the board early. Rion Marquez year. makes it one zip KC. Now, Leo Gibson, as previously mentioned, entered this game needing four points for 400 career regular season points. There's number 397 and career goal 200 for Leo. He would go on to assist on a goal, then he pots his 399th regular season point right there. Soon after, he makes history. Ellis picks it up on his horse. Ellis with a drive! It's Walton the save, rebound shot, out front goal! Patrick. Who got that one? It's Leo! Leo legend! Well, happy 400. Happy 400, Leo! If Frank Taiyu beat him to 400 by a day, but Leo did it having played five games less in his career, so there's that. Tacoma having a painful evening. This was their first goal, and it's an own goal by KC. At least it snapped the shutout. What a night in KC, over 6,000 in attendance. Gibson talked about his accomplishment after the game. Well, it's an honor, privilege. I feel blessed. Um, you know, um, doing it on this stage with the group of guys that I'm doing it with, the position that I'm in, um, it's all a blessing, you know, I, uh, I really cherished it. Yeah, Leo's just all class. Congrats to him and Frank on hitting 400. As for the game, not even close. KC wins 9-2. Utica taking on Milwaukee. The Wave leading 2-0 in the first quarter when Slava Yupi Palipovic gets the Blues on the board. Back comes Milwaukee, though. Ian Bennett, our guest on the show a bit later, just keeps on scoring. He makes it. 3-1 wave in the second quarter though. The score tied at four. Moises Gonzalez puts City up for the first time in the contest. Fourth quarter now, the wave trail with just a buck 34 remaining when Bennett coming through in the clutch. He ties it up, setting up the dramatic finish. See if Milwaukee can still get a shot. Moved across, Huffman, Derek's got a good look, shot and goal! Hey, Derek! Wave leads 7-6. Derek Kaufman plays hero for Milwaukee, the winner with just eight seconds left on the clock as the Wave take this one 7-6. Okay, the Blast visiting Harrisburg. Now, the Heat still searching for their first win of the campaign coming into this one. Second quarter, down 2-1 when Robert Williamson going top shelf to tie it up 2-2. Then Danny DePrima, watch the one-timer here. Boom! Yeah, the home crowd was loving it, but you knew the blast wasn't going to go quietly. Jeremy Rayleigh trying to claw them back in it with the strike right there, and uh, then trailing by two late in the game, Jamie Thomas with one that keeper William Bonahaney would love to have back, but big time players shake those off and bounce back. That is exactly what he does. Dying seconds, huge game saver right there. Willie B, money as the Heat finally end up with their first win of the campaign. They take it 6-5. Okay, league news. The MASL announced the formation of the Gino DiPolito Referee of the Year Award in honor of the 
former MASL official. It will be awarded to the league's top referee each year. Gino is a legend who's remembered fondly by both players and spectators, as Commissioner Keith Tozer explains. Uh, Gino was a very, very good uh, referee, probably one of the best referees in the indoor game. But what he did is he inspired up other referees to join the league and, and come into the game. He also was a great teacher. And because of his personality, fans loved him. Yes, they did. Give the League also announced the creation of the first ever MASL college draft. It'll be an annual draft taking place at the conclusion of the outdoor season, five rounds long with the first two rounds being territorial. Tozer feels it's a huge step forward for the league. Well, in the marketing aspect, we felt that we needed to get back into the conversation that we're part of the soccer family in the country. And the reason why we wanted to do that is we also felt that the college player, both foreign uh, and, and national, is extremely important to the game. So they, they have a different pathway. They can go to outdoor soccer or they can go to indoor. We're excited about it, especially the first two picks, which are the territorial picks. And finally, what a weekend it was in Kansas City. Not only were the Comets hosting the Stars in front of a big crowd downtown, but the MASL also took part in the United Soccer Coaches Convention. Both Commissioner Tozer and Director of Communications JP Della Camera spoke and outlined future plans for the MASL. Now Keith Tozer will actually be on primetime next week to go further in depth as to what it was like and why it was important for the league to take part. Welcome back to Primetime, everyone. My guest on the program today is a guy who really needs no introduction. He's a player who pretty much just scores at will whenever he's out on the floor. Launching it downfield. Now the centering Bennett coming in. Shot the goal! The man, the legend, IB26 himself, Ian Bennett from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, which we'll get to a little bit later on. But he joins me now from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ian, thanks so much for taking the time. How you doing, man? Alex, man, awesome, man. Thanks for having me on the show, man. It's so great to have you on the show, Matt, after all this time. And uh, let's just get right to it. Let's talk about your wave. Uh, the start that you've had to the season, uncharacteristically slow uh, for an organization that is perennially uh, challenging, of course, for the MASL Championship. You guys have bounced back recently, though. You've won two of your last three games. Just talk about the start the team has had so far this year, Ian. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy from our championship season. I think we have, honestly, four or five guys back. So it's kind of a, a new team, and, and just trying to build that whole Milwaukee Wave culture is, is tough right now. So I think we had a slow start, honestly, in every game we had the lead. So that kind of sucks, but um, I, I think we're getting better. We're making strides, and um, we're looking good. These last three games, I, I, feel, I feel more confident. Well, let's talk about last season for a second because it was unique for so many different reasons. Obviously, uh, Milwaukee didn't play. They took a one-year hiatus from the league due to COVID-19 restrictions. You were able to, though. You were loaned to the uh, powerhouse Florida Tropics. And uh, to say that you had a great year would be an understatement. You were the league's most valuable player uh, last season. Just talk about that year that you had and what it was like uh, putting on the uniform of a different organization after being with Milwaukee for so long. Yeah, it was kind of crazy, man. Um, obviously, the weather was awesome. It was beautiful, but it was a different culture down there, right? And playing with some new guys, but uh, they w welcomed me with open arms and they were really good. The, the owner, the staff, the coach, the players, they were, it was awesome. You know, they really trained real hard. So that was kind of like Milwaukee. Um, and, and the field was, honestly, the only thing that was different was just putting on different colors, you know, the white and orange. I'd have wanted the MVP a couple more years, but to win it in that season with like, basically every team was an all-star. Honestly, for me, that was a special moment. Well, finally, Ian, you've mentioned that you bleed red in more ways than one. And uh, you are, of course, a proud Canadian. You're from the Hammer, uh, Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, there've been a lot of great Canucks that have come through the MASL over the years, you had the chance to play for the Canadian National Arena team, which uh, actually didn't get started until 2017. But what was it like for you to, as a proud Canadian, pull that maple leaf over your chest and suit up for your national team? Yeah, it was crazy because you've seen like Giuliano, the, like the great Canadians that have played indoor soccer, but really never got to represent their country because we just never sorted it out. But 
for us to do it, it's like the pathway, you know? Then we got like the Daniel Chamales, Josh Lamoses, Robert Renault's coming in and, and getting to play like kind of an all-star team with those guys and, and representing our country. It, dude, it's amazing, man. Like, I hope they do it again. It is so cool to play with fellow Canadians and, and playing the game you love, man. It, it was just awesome, man. All right, man, unfortunately that is it. We are all out of time, but uh, I'm so glad we finally got to do this, man. You are a joy to watch out there. You give it your all every time you're on the floor and that's why the fans love you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Take care and we'll chat soon. Hey, Alex, thanks so much, man. We'll build different, man. We're gonna get this done. Welcome back to Primetime, everyone. You know, you get the feeling that the Ontario Fury is still trying to find its groove this season. The squad did, of course, make it all the way to the Ron Newman Cup final last year. And obviously, they have superstars in Frank Taiyu and Justin Stinson. But the team entered week eight of play with just a 3-3 three and three record. However, a 10-4 shellacking of Baltimore on Friday hinted at just how powerful this team can be and they were looking to keep on rolling against Utica on Sunday. UCFC came into this game which is two wins in eight contests this season and it didn't start out well for them. Cisse, down, sharp angle, try, Tayu missed it but there to crush in the rebound is Cisse. Israel Cisse draws first blood for Ontario. Second quarter they add to it Justin Stinson. Johnny on the spot, and he puts the Fury up by a deuce. And then Robert Palmer goes to work as he smashes this one top shelf. And it wasn't looking good for the Blues. Ontario was pulling away up three zip. But then it's like Utica just flicked the switch. Tim Goldman, watch this, that's using your knees. He gets the Blues on the board. They trail 3-1. And then uh, Christian Segura, boom. He was loving it, the crowd was loving it. UCFC on the comeback trail, they could feel it. Fourth quarter, they complete the road back and Nate Bordeaux ties it up. It was 3-3 and Utica seemed to have all the momentum, but then, which is 48 seconds left, Palmer, his second of the game, rips the still beating heart out of Utica's chest. They come all the way back, but can't pull it off as the Fury take this one 4-3. Now, it was a tough weekend for Dallas, who had to play both its games on the road against the powerful Florida Tropics. This was the Sunday game. Drew Ruggles, five points on the day, including a hat-trick. That's the game's opening goal. Cody Ellis, though, draws the sidekicks even. The deflection out front, making it 1-1. But then... Ruggles just missed it. Here's a long shot, go! Oh, that was an absolute cannon. Wasn't it? Oh, it was. Breno Oliveira with the howitzer, and then Bruno Henrique adds to the lead soon after, 3-1. Luis Morales continues to shine for Dallas, though. Huge shot there to pull them within a single goal. Second half, Morales added again with his squad down 5-2. Look at the moves and the finish. It's 5 3 Tropics, and then Philippe Silva uh, goes 5 hole to pull them within a single goal. The Tropics always kept it just out of reach, though. Zach Reggett restores the two goal lead. Uh, yet again, though, the sidekicks hit back. Shocker, it's Morales making it 6 5. All Tropics from that point on, though, as they take it 10 6. And as mentioned, tough weekend it was for Dallas as they dropped the Friday game as well, and that one was way worse. 15-4 the final on Friday. Okay, primetime players then, and your offensive player of the week is Jaime Ruiz from the San Diego Soccers, and he was a beast against Chihuahua. Four goals, three assists over the span of two games, and he had the overtime winner in the first one. Great week for Mr. Ruiz, and your defensive player of the week, keeper Chris Toth from the Ontario Fury, who was solid in two wins for Ontario. 14 saves and a goal against 
the Baltimore Blast on Friday. Beautiful. Okay, plays of the week now. To step up in front of them as well. Quick turn, there and there go. it is. Frank Caillou, point number 400 in his career. One goal lead. Ferdinand, right side, saved by Willie B. Down the box. El balonazo largo de Boris Pardo, el cartoso de Morgan, el remate. Goal! Moved across, Huffman, Derek's got a good look, shot a goal! Hey, Derek! They look for Goldman, he heads it. Cigar scores! Oh, and Drew Ruggles just missed it. Here's a long shot, goal! 5.6 seconds remaining in the half, still time for Utica perhaps for one more shot, turning shot by Gonzalez, he scores. Into Morales, the excellent rookie, shoots and scores. Segundos, Carlitos, que loten, que loten, viene Rio, la dimana, gol, 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 gol! Picks it up on his horse, Ellis with a drive! It's Walton the save, rebound shot, out front, goal! It's Leo! Well, happy 400. Happy 400, Leo! And unfortunately, that is it. We are all out of time for this week. But uh, just a reminder, of course, all throughout the season, uh, for all the latest news, statistics, great feature stories as well uh, by our MASL writers, be sure to check out the league's different social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week.